We were talking with Bruce about the wrestling going on, the March Madness, a lot going on in March, a lot going on in April, a lot going on in the spring. How about that Ring of Honor? What about them right now? I don't think they've lost a beat since they lost uh, uh, They lost the Young Bucks, they lost Cody, lost some other guys. I think they're still doing well. I like the entry of Juice Robinson. I also like the work being done by, Bandi by Bandito. Yes. He's going to love that guy. And yeah. they've still got Dalton Castle. They've got a they've got a stable right now, a group of cast to keep these guys going, I think. Don't you? Yeah, they do. And they've got Brody King and um, – they got Brody King. PCO. And PCO. PCO is an interesting guy. So, 50 that years Haas, old. And hot tough sauce, as all Tracy hell. Williams. He's going to be good in the future. They got some good yeah, young guys so. on they that. Got some good young and guys. And that lifeblood group. Yeah, they, they're they're moving. You know, and then of course what they've got in in a week or two is Ring of Honor New Japan Pro Wrestling in Madison Square Garden. Madison Square Garden. Yeah. Um, that Saturday night. So um, there's going to be a lot of wrestling fans in New York City and. WrestleMania and um, a good many of them in Madison Square Garden that sold out, and then the NXT shows that are always good, and you expect them to really be something at um, really be something in in New York for WrestleMania. So lots of big wrestling, and then the Hall of Fame, and then um, Joey Janela's Spring Break, and all kinds of you know all, all kinds of, um, of of independent wrestling in the greater New York area. So back to Ring of Honor, though, you don't think they're losing much right now as far as uh, what they're doing, how they're still carrying on. Their TV looks pretty good right now. Plus, they've got the sell-up for the Madison Square Garden. It depends what they do through the rest of the spring, but I think they're making good moves to keep this company afloat and keep it strong. They've um, been competitive in, in getting new talent and, uh, and, and to replace the old talent, and that was something they really needed to do. Had to do it quick, too. Had to make quick had to do it quick, and, yeah. and they've outbid some people because there was interest in Bandito, there was interest in Brody King and, and uh, PCO and some of those other acts too um, and they were able to get in there and, and get them it's how they put them together and can they grow they've kind of still been in that same place gonna need um, a new tag their, team uh, sometime i think a new yeah, tag team because the briscoe's not getting any younger i think they re-signed and uh silas young re-signed i think the villain the villain incorporated um with marty he, Skrull, he's gone though right he's gonna be yeah, to your yeah, knowledge it's expected that yeah i mean that's that speculation I'll, yeah i'll say that so you know we're still waiting to see um with AEW. And, I think the uh, Lifeblood's got more heat right now than the Villain Enterprises does. That's do just you? my opinion. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I think Lifeblood, Juice Robinson, that crew, yeah. the young guys he's brought in to get going, I think these yeah. guys are doing well. Yeah. And Juice Robinson's a bigger guy than people would think. You hear the name Juice, Juice Robinson. I tell you he's what, a pretty good sized guy. Yeah. Um, and I tell you what, when you see him, um, he's got all the charisma that there is. Um, it's unfortunate that Gordon, they have him. He busted um, his knee again, didn't he? Busted his knee again huh. before. He, and he could be a lead player in that group if you ever get healthy and stay healthy for a long period of time. That guy could take off. Yeah, he could. He's got, so, what you mentioned earlier, got that charisma. Yeah, and I, I definitely see the Juice Robinson, you know, that, that, that guy, you know, you see him and it's like, you see him live, you see him on television, it's like, that's the guy that has it. So, um, uh, you know, you know, I, I expect I expect he'll be moving up in big things wherever he ends up, and but, but in the ring of honor. For, for the conceivable, foreseeable future. Who would you say is the top player right now in Ring of Honor? That is an interesting question, Jay. Lethal's the um, heavyweight champion, and he just had the um, hour long. He just had the hour draw with Matt Taven, um, which I was laughing. People, oh my God, an hour long draw! You never see that. And I'm like, you should have come to Gibsonville. I mm -hmm. saw it a ton of times. But um, yeah, with, with Trevor Lee. But um, yeah, um, it's you know, you know, Lethal and then um, Silas Young and. I don't know who the who I would say the top guy is with them. Um, you know they've they've had that. I tell you, Dalton Cows could be that guy. He's the most flamboyant. I think he's as good as anybody wrestling today, just because of the way he's flamboyant with the boys, the way he does in the ring, and his character. Yeah. I mean, AEW would be smart if they would have tried to get him. I think he could have been a major yeah, addition. He's, been, he's just um, really something. You know, he's the guy that you want to see sometime during his career, either on a big New Japan, a big New Japan show at the main event or close to the main event, or even more in a Wrestle, at a WrestleMania, so that he can do what he does. With that flamboyancy, he's um, got that crazy personality. Money. He's got Who's wrestling that? background to go with it. Yeah, um, injuries kind of, he, he get in though. Injuries, yeah, injuries slowed him down, him and he seemed, yeah, he seemed to lose some momentum this year. But a hell of an act, and, and yeah, I mean, I, I remember going to see him a year or so ago, and um, Britt Whitmire and several of my friends just running to, you know, these middle-aged men running to the <laughs> ring barrier. Um, Bryant Williams, um, some more radio guys, um, just to just to get as close as they could to. Dalton Castle, I fell out laughing, and that was, um, I mean, it's understandable, that's a yeah. great act. Probably one of the best new acts to come along in the past 10 years or so, I'd say. As far as gimmicks, yeah, definitely, yeah. with the with the boys and those things, yeah, definitely, yeah, um, very, very good act. Women of Honor, what about them? I think that's as good as any classification around, the WWE's got all those women, 
with the McMahon and his crew and Triple H and Stephanie. They've got a little bit of strong women there. But uh, I think the winner of honor, I think that Tennille Dashwood, I like her when she's healthy. Yeah, uh, yeah. She, I mean, you know, she spent her time in, in WWE. But I think, you know, I, the um, eyes have been opened for, you know, and there's more women interested in wrestling. There's more, um, you know, girls and kids and that kind of, well, I don't know if there's more girls and kids, but there's definitely more women interested in both being wrestlers and, um, and being fans of it. And then you've got, uh, there's a, a significant um, a bunch of folks that, um, guys that, that you know, accept women's wrestling for, for just being straight up. I think some of the girls that so UFC and like, they want to do that initially, when do UFC and they find out they can also do wrestling and in the end it might be a little bit safer doing the wrestling in the UFC. Yeah, and you know, you've got Shayna Baszler and you've got um, you've got the four horsewomen, the other four horsewomen that you know you think some point down the line, although they're, they're pretty um, rough looking, pretty green looking so far in the ring. It's kind of a but, shame Madison Rain went back up to Impact though, lost her from Ring of Honor. Right, Madison Tessa Rain Blanchard. Um, Boy, she's tough. Very, Talented. Very, I think she's the next big thing on the women's level anyway. Very volatile. But Man, very, good, talented. very good talk. Very much like her, um, very much like her father was. Do you think her dad is proud or disappointed in her? What I do you think? Imagine both her dads. Yeah, Magnum Jake, and, and, with uh, Magnum TA. Magnum TA. And I think he's Tully. probably more proud than maybe Tully because I think Magnum think. had more influence on her. He was around her more. Tully's around. I've he, seen Tully around her too. I think yeah. both of them are like really involved in her wrestling. Magnum career. couldn't help her physically, but help her as far as psychological part of wrestling goes. Yeah, psychology. I mean, yeah, definitely. And, you know, and I think that like that volatility that her father had, that her, her, that her biological father had, Tully Blanchard had, um, kind of got passed down because. You know, Blanchard was a handful. Um, yeah, he lost it as he got older. He's kind of changed his ways and was going yeah. a different way. Yeah. So it's it's something like that. But I, you know, again, um, in Chicago this August, and, and you know, you know, Magnum was featured on an All In show, and, and Tully Blanchard was featured there too. So you saw like Magnum, that. right? Yes. Does yes. he walk with a cane? Can he get around okay? Um, the one that really affected me about two. It's been about two years now, but um, I was in Waterloo, Iowa, for Pro Wrestling Hall of Fame, and. He was there, and I saw him um, get off his scooter and fold it up and walk wow. some steps. And that, that, you know, when you think about the history and how he, you know, it's a miracle that he lived, and then he was not expected to really, you know, maybe not even get out of that, that iron lung. And so, um, and all the, the drama and, you know, and pathos of that back in the 80s, um, it's a really cool thing to see. Nice guy and, and talkative and, you know, and, and, and kind of, you know, talk about heroes. That guy's a hero. I mean, he just pushed through in life and, and um, didn't feel sorry for himself and made the best of what he has and, and has a successful, successful businessman, successful family man. And I think he's enjoying the fruits of his labor these days. He would have made a lot of money in Rust, and if he would have stayed healthy, he would have made a ton, don't you think? Yeah, I, yeah, I think so. I never bought he was the next Hulk Hogan, but yeah, he'd have been, he'd have been a player. I mean, I wonder... I wonder if he'd have been Sting or, or maybe better than Sting. So did it help him? He was he was pretty good friends with Dusty, right? Oh God, yeah. Dude, that helped he him a lot there. too to get where he was going. Right? Of course, it always did. I mean, it, it does now. It's like you know, if you're, you're friends with um, friends with Cody people. could help, right? Friends with yeah, with friends with Cody, friends with Triple H, friends with Mr. Man, friends with Andy Durham. I mean, it helps your career. Friends with the cons. Yeah, it's friends with the cons. It, that that's <laughs> all right. You know, just find yourself that find yourself that guy. You know, just, or be that guy. So. Well, let's be that guy with Bruce Mitchell Pro Wrestling Torch. It's the March Madness from Sheets on Spring Garden Street. Going to be back after break. Stay with us. Right back after these. Stay with us.